Okay, let's see how this turns out. See that? It is called the Nutcracker. So maybe this video will be me cracking some nuts. Let's see. I guess first I'll start with this, uh, if you want to call it a sickness, uh, inflammation, uh, expulsion uh, that I've been going through. And it's, uh, yes, I've been entering uh, the fever mode on a lesser scale nothing intense uh, too intense uh, with the sensations on the skin yeah that can get quite intense uh, feeling um, extreme heat and extreme cold all at once and uh, yeah but um, this is I have never hacked up so much garbage from my lungs, bronchial, uh, nasal, uh, sinus, uh, I've never hacked up so much phlegm, uh, in my life, it's almost, uh, astonishing to me, it's startling at sometimes, how much, and it's almost like, uh, like fuck, is, is this, like, taking away from, like, other, uh, storage, You, other uh, things that are going on, processes in my body, like how much, like <laughs> what is it taking to produce all this phlegm, like what the fuck, um, and then I've also noticed that unlike, like, I, well first of all, like, I haven't, I haven't, had anything like this for like I can't remember the last time so it's been many 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 years for me um but I do remember in the past whenever this would happen uh it would, al it would always cause like uh, severe irritation in, with, around my nose uh, because of all the crap I'm spitting out and then constantly wiping uh, using tissue paper or whatever to get the crap out uh, it would cause like severe irritation uh, and this time it's it's not so much uh, here towards the end uh, yeah there's a little bit but that was also surprising to me because of the volume and amount, and then also it, it was just kind of cool, like, and, and it made me think it's probably because of uh, all the cleansing I've been doing, all, all the frequent fasts I do with the, with the moon phases, and... It was kind of cool to experience that. But then also, whenever this first hit, I didn't notice anyone else uh, going through it until I got to the extreme parts for, for myself. And then kind of went um, just a little bit over the tipping point where I was starting to feel a little bit better. Then I started to notice that everyone uh, not everyone, a lot of people w was going through this as well, uh, in my 
town, but also I, I, certain YouTube videos I've been watching, uh, been noticing that they've been having a similar hack and a phlegm and congestion going on. So, what I have noticed is uh, they're getting it at about, and this is undershooting, uh, one tenth of what I got. So I, I got it, and I, and I hardly ever get sick, so, I mean, <laughs> if I can take the brunt of it so that others don't have to, I, okay, I'll, I'll share my immunities with everyone, if it's not just sending my microbiome to the four winds and spreading it that way, which... Uh, that thought just kind of uh, initiated other thoughts of uh, what I used to do in my meditations in the night, targeting not necessarily certain individuals, but individuals that would pick it up uh, in the dream realm. Because this is when I would do the meditations, when others would be sleeping. Because I find it easier to engage and explore and travel whenever there's less chatter. So I was just talking to a friend and one of the few friends in the flesh that I have. Don't have very many friends at all. I am I'm friendly to most everyone unless <sighs> there are many who are triggered, as a lot of you will know from your own personal experiences. There are many who are triggered um, with authenticity and um, whenever an individual has done their own self-exploration and deep work, you can call it shadow work, uh, the people who are unwilling to do that for themselves will be triggered by those who have. And this is just something you will experience if you've done this. So, it's always a learning experience for me when I'm around these people and they go out of their way constantly to throw the worst that they can come up with at me and then try to throw it to the side once, if, I respond. Oh, I'm just joking. Oh, can't you take a joke? Hmm. You're going out of your way to say a condescending and or derogatory and demeaning comment, which you weren't even involved with the conversation to begin with. You, you barely hear it. And then you come in to the conversation and say something demeaning, hoping to get a response. Oh, but I was just joking. You are lucky that you are protected by ignorance. And my fuse grows shorter and shorter with how willing I am to allow this within my spherical reality bubble.
because all it takes a, a lot of the times with people is a sharp, quick, intense lesson to shock their nervous system, to help wake them up. And it's not coming from a place where I feel the need to act out because I feel whatever for me. No, this is a disgust that I feel and an embarrassment. Um, essentially, most people nowadays are not true human beings. And what I mean by this is our original state. We, we knew our connections with nature, with Mother Earth, with the celestial beings, with the stars, with the sun and moon. So, modern day humans are, are not what they used to be, for sure, but they, they cannot really be likened to true humans, even. I don't mean to be uh, derogatory, necessarily, <sighs> or to, to spit shit, but... Once you realize for yourself what it means to be a true human being, and then you are around other other people who are more robot than human, and this is a lot of people, but they're not also robots. They are robots that are programmed and operating on a pro a certain directive to disrupt truth. And a lot of times, you know, this also is an occurrence within people who uh, may not have this happen all that often or don't or they don't they don't engage this like that's not their prime directive but it, it, it does seem to be um, becoming more and more widespread that people are being triggered or offended or susceptible to certain influences and yes this has a lot to do with pollu frequency pollution living away from our natural habitat as true human beings I also want to clarify a little bit. Um, hmm. Clarity is what we wanted to seek here. And we may word things a certain way, but essentially we have to look beyond those words and, and try to try to feel the essence of what someone is really saying beyond the words, try to feel their true intention. So whenever I'm saying something such as, um, I want to do it smarter, not harder. This is a reference to clarity. I want to see clearer and not even once is I, I'm 
attuning to this. I'm actively engaging the attunement of becoming clearer. I also want to say real quick about the hunting thing that I said in my last video and how it was disgusting. Uh, this is just my personal feeling about it and that's because of what I see and have experienced with animals and using them as a food source. So my stance or whatever, my position on that is Everything was given to us, and it, it's up to us how we utilize and use these things. So if someone wants to utilize the animal kingdom as a food source, then that's their choice. To, what I say very frequently to people is to each their own. I do agree with uh, the statement of tend to your own garden because very few people do that nowadays. Am I excluding myself from this in any sort? I'm constantly coming back to this and being reminded of this. So, personally, for me, what I would rather do with animals, how I would like to utilize them is kind of treat them as pets, definitely not as indoor pets, treat them as familiars, relations, develop relationships with them to where we both can live in harmony and benefit from each other's awareness, from each other's presence. I won't talk too much about this because you can kind of research yourself uh, or look into it yourself, but people have taught animals to do amazing things, all kinds of things that you wouldn't believe, but uh, this is of the benefit of, of the individual, but also if the animal is treated and re with respect and love, appreciation then what they are doing for the person that that brings that brings the animal the greatest feelings that it, it will ever experience Okay, so I guess this will be the start of uh, encouraging people to look into the Ringing Cedars of Russia books. Because this is something that will, uh, I mean, it's already having a very significant effect, a very widespread effect. And uh, it's a waiting for people to catch up, to feel, essentially. When you read these books, you, you, you either feel the truth and the essence in them, or you are instantly triggered. In my experience in trying to share these books with people, they are immediately triggered. And, these books are so powerful. These are the most powerful books present today. I put my, not just my life, I, I put my, when I say my life, it's, it's all of our lives. I put it all on the line here. All my chips are into this. But I've had experiences with these books, trying to share these books 
and uh, experiencing. I've read about people's reactions, uh, good and bad. And it's a, it's very, it's always re reflective of on uh, what people are willing to, what they have already integrated. What I think they are, are really able to feel the intent or if they are just reflecting themselves, which is what most everyone does in their interactions and their engagements with things. They just reflect themselves and they don't recognize that they're doing this, so they put up a guard to that because they don't want to face themselves. But in these books, uh, you will read ab about animals being utilized in the true intended way, which is living in harmony with one another, recognizing that, well, with a true human, an animal will recognize, and I mean, some of you may understand what I mean by this. Uh, you'll be around certain animals and they're used to having a certain reaction, say protecting their owners, protecting the property, and they feel your presence and awareness. Or if they are, and most animals uh, are very, like their owners, are very clogged, disoriented, confused. So they will go about their initiatory response, but then the eye contact happens and they freeze. And they feel, and their tails start wagging, and they start whimpering, and then they want to <laughs> smell you and be your friend. Of course, there are, are going to be some wild animals. Uh, and this isn't wild as in natural wild. This is uh, animals that have been betrayed by humans and uh, run around in packs in the wild. This happens in, in all certain areas. Other countries probably more than, than others. But these animals, uh, you can't reach like that. And they do need to be taught a lesson from a true human that uh, humans aren't their, your food source. Because that does happen some places. Okay, so back to this uh, crazy phlegm shit that I've been going through. I was talking to a friend uh, recently. And I was telling him how, because I get sick so rarely, and because kind of like how I explained in my last video, uh, my relationship with sickness at a young age, um, I, I enjoy the... How I perceive things differently. I don't even enjoy it. I appreciate it. And I, I accept what I'm going through. But I also accept that it's a learning process. And I want to engage in this learning process. I don't want to engage in ending the sickness. Because, and this is what I said to my friend. Like, I, I have the knowledge to end it immediately. I can end this immediately i have the resources the things that i can utilize <laughs> i have the practices the mentality the energetics to end this abruptly immediately but once it reaches a certain intensity i realize there's something i need to learn here so i allow it i allow it to happen because of the things that I learned from it. 
you know, that may sound crazy, crazy to a lot of people. Why, why would you want to be sick? Well, I rarely get sick, so I learn a lot from it. Not just how not to be sick, but I'm reminded of certain deeper things. I am allowed access to certain things, certain modes of being. To help remind me why I'm here, who I am. And my friend, I, I, I said all this to him and I and I said, like, and I know that probably sounds crazy, because I mean who would want to be sick? And he's like, dude, I was kinda taken aback a little bit by this, even though he is a pretty old cat. Like, I don't have a lot of friends in the flesh, as I said. But he said, dude, like, that makes sense to me. Because most people don't want to learn nowadays, but but you do. I'm like, damn, you fucking nailed it right there, dude. No one wants to learn nowadays. And I told him, everyone wants that quick fix. They want that instant gratification. That's what they go to. They go to the doctors for the quick fix. They don't want to learn the lessons. And this isn't necessarily that they don't want to learn, but most people have been tricked into thinking that the government, the healthcare, the hospital, uh, all these things that supposedly are for our benefit, they, they are actually preying upon us. And a lot of times people will only come to realize that once they have gotten to the level where it's too late for them which I have witnessed for myself time and time again. So yeah, this is and this is going to go into the uh I just watched the Venom movie. And I don't watch movies anymore all that often. Whenever I did, even in the past, I would always, uh, I would never see what, what everyone else saw, ever. So, like, I could never talk to people about movies because I saw, uh, whenever I watch movies, I see not only the agendas that are being pushed, I see the battles of, of uh, uh, the, the forces uh, involved here that are trying to portray a message to help people wake up and learn something but then also there's the powers of um, engaging the emotional response because that's what they're after that's what they seek a certain emotional response and a also a reminder of um, remaining, remaining ignorant to the truth that is all around, that is blatantly obvious for those with eyes to see. So with this movie, the forces of ignorance have about 80 five or higher percent influence on this movie. But there are some things that you can draw from it, such as the symbiote. Um, and they keep using the term parasite, which is very accurate. Do your own research. Research the effects that parasites have on the human body, body and mind. And then this black goo thing, uh, this, th that was all very accurate. This is this is exactly what happens with uh, a human form and a symbiote, a black goo of intelligence. And there are certain chemicals that one can take 
to engage this as well, and uh, <laughs> this will go into uh, a previous chat that I had on another person's channel where uh, the people didn't take me seriously, which I was being funny when I was saying things such as, you know, I've been dead forever, like, there's no death, I am drugs. Uh, they were talking about certain chemicals and that they were delirious. And I'm like, look around you. This world is delirious. Wake up. So, of course, you know, I was uh, responded with, you're dumb. Oh, okay, that's great. But, uh, one chemical in particular, one plant, uh, is called Datura. And that can have, uh, extreme effects on the human body to where you experience your dream world and your waking world become one and you, if you are not prepared for this experience, if you are not learned in engaging in the dream world, having a little bit of control with your subtle body, your astral body, whatever you want to call it, being lucid not only in the dream world but also in the waking because most people aren't even, they want to talk about lucidity, having lucid dreams. But you know, be lucid in your waking dream first. That's how you start there. But uh, Detura, and then I have also experienced other chemicals that meld these realms, and uh, you'll find. <laughs> You'll find yourself having conversations with these dream characters in real time and then uh, kind of pop back into waking life and realize, oh, I've been having a conversation here for a while and uh, no one's here. But that's, that's just kind of part of it. Uh, some of the experiences I have felt and, and read about with uh, Detura in particular um, the shamanic realm is melded in with your limited perception of your, what is your waking life your limited perception of what you think is reality is it's melded in there so you're, you have to face that Like you don't have any choice in the matter and a lot of times with intense psychedelic or plant spirit medicines you're, you're thrusted into a world where you have to write it out. So you, uh, if you don't go with the flow, and if you want to resist and hold on to the banks of the river, then uh, that's whenever you have, quote-unquote, bad trips or bad experiences. But I mean, this is also uh, true with just reality, without taking anything is also true. So I mean, this is what the message is here with these intense experiences, with or without uh, little helpers, as I like to call them. The message is always, we are intensifying what's already within you, for you to learn from this and tap into what is within you, what you have control of. But uh, I don't hear that being talked about all that often either with these things at all. Except for maybe shamans, but even then, it depends upon the shaman. And, and their, what they have been led to believe is, is real. Because if they don't, if they don't already realize that the human, the human form is already the most high, 
the highest form of technology in the universe, then they're already going to be operating from a, a mode of degradation and suppression, mainly just suppression, not realizing all that they are, all that they have power over. So a lot of times even these shamans get caught up in utilizing the chemicals over a true, okay, I'm just going to put it this way. A true shaman doesn't need the chemicals anymore. A true shaman has learned from the, from the sp spirits. And a true shaman helps others who are engaging the spirits enter into a space that they feel safe and that they are encouraged to engage deeply within themselves and then ultimately come out of that experience empowered and realize that you have just experienced something that has always been within you and that you always have access to, but you forgot that. So these little helpers are little reminders. So yeah, uh, with the Detura, I have um, read people's experiences. Not even read, but felt. Like I, whenever I read things, I don't like reading things. I I experience them. Like if 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 an image isn't created for me in heart and mind then I can tell that, that those words that have been written aren't genuine. There's something going on with the author. That they have conflict within themselves and the message isn't coming out clear. But the Detura melds the shamanic shape-shifting realities into your physical waking life reality so you will experience sometimes um, dramatic shape shape shifting um, and it all depends upon what you have been programmed with so if you have the vampire werewolf uh, programs within you like this is what you will experience I have experienced both of these with and without chemicals. Uh, this is going to be a talk for a later time because this is uh, sensitive stuff. I, I don't like talking about this, but the whole point of me making these videos and whatnot is uh, not only to express myself and see. <laughs> see the responses, but also maybe to touch people who have also experienced similar things. And so that they know that they're not alone in those experiences. That they're not crazy or whatever. Hmm. So yeah, I'll go into a little bit about uh, hmm. vampiric energies my experience with this. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, hmm. I have been greeted or <sighs> initiated in certain experiences, in feelings, um, and a lot of these are very animalistic as if in, you can say like, I don't want to use a werewolf, but I've experienced that as well. Like, like conic, like an, 
it's likened to a lichen, but uh, vampiric energies. Um, I've been I know what that feels like to be a vampire. I'm not engaged in vampiric. And this is also, I mean, this kind of brings up uh, things for me uh, with what I'm seeing with uh, vegans jumping to uh, drinking blood. I've, I've been noticing that on YouTube quite a bit. And yes, there's immense fucking energy in meat and blood, yes. There's also immense addictions to these things. So yes, it will feel amazing. Just just like heroin. Just like any kind of... A strong... Alkaloid or, or drug. Anything that acts upon the central nervous system. And the relaxant. Morphine. This is going to be, feel fucking amazing your first few times. But then you're going to be seeking that ride again. You're going to be realizing that, hey, I can't reach these points to where I used to be. I have to keep on trying to get there. So this, this is the same thing with vampirism. And I have um, felt this in the past, but I also still feel this a little bit, time to time. So my past experiences, I, um, I felt what it feels to be a vampire and, and have the need to, to drink blood. Ooh, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but whatever. Uh, human blood, and, and a certain quality of it. <sighs> certain emotions have to be felt in the blood before that quality is achieved to where you can access the chemicals within the blood. Adrenaline, cortisol, certain chemicals, testosterone, uh, a little bit, but more adrenaline. <sighs> okay, I'm going to talk about whenever I was uh, experiencing these feelings deeply. Um, at the time, it freaked me out. It freaked me the fuck out. I'm going to be honest. It freaked me the fuck out that I was feeling like I needed to be a, be a vampire. And it was hard for me to be around certain people because of... <sighs> it's fucked up to say, and it's going to be fucked up to listen to. Like, I understand that. Like, I... I accept anyone, what, whatever people have to say about it, like, that's fine, like, I accept that, I understand where you're coming from, because, yeah, this isn't gonna be <laughs> something people are gonna be able, to, be able to relate to at all, so, I mean, I understand, that's fine, yeah, you can call me crazy and a freak, that's my life, so, ooh, nothing new there, but, I also wanna make it clear, I never engaged in these things, I felt them, but I did not go ahead and engage within them. I had that option many, many times. I had people... <sighs> fuck, fuck. <sighs> I had people throw themselves at me uh, with these chemicals. They didn't even feel a certain way, but then they would throw themselves at me and get themselves worked up. They would purposely get themselves worked up, to th get these chemicals flowing within their blood, and I wouldn't have any response. I would just be sitting there, like, like, saying to them, I, I don't want to engage in this. They would get themselves worked up to where <sighs> these feelings uh, would emerge. Like, it would be attractive. Uh, 
I would feel that. Oh, it's hard to talk about this. Because I don't really talk about this. Yeah, right now, uh, it's making me sick to my stomach. Like, these are the feelings that I'm having right now with this. I, I, I don't have these feelings so much anymore. I do from time to time, but not anything near an intense level like, like those times. So right now, uh, it's making me very sick to my stomach talking about this. Uh, very sick to my stomach. But I, I just wanted to offer this up as, uh, you know, an experience. I have watched other people on YouTube and whatever, making videos, talking about similar things. So I might as well throw my story in as well, that I too have experienced this. But I did not do what they did, and I did not engage in the acts that they did. Because if I did, I would... Mm, I would become the Dracula. And that's... I already knew that. I mean, that's why I was engaged with it. Because they wanted a new Dracula. No. <sighs> okay, so let's go out of that before I throw up. <laughs> I'll get hungry again. One of the two. I will also say that the thirst for a certain type of blood also coincides with draining your system. Of you leave yourself susceptible to these energies once you drain yourself of your prana and your auric field, and drinking too much alcohol will do this. It will, it will deprive you of your auric field. So just be wary of this. Because a lot of times with people, these these two things correlate. Alcoholism and vampirism. So I will, I will now go into... The AI, um, their modus operandi right now is uh, deciding what they need to eradicate, what they need to engage upon, what humans are a threat, what humans are parasites. What humans need to be eradicated. And then um, the vampiric humans. Um, the AI is dismantling them. And that's probably why I was being uh, thrusted towards that realm of vampirism and uh, those energies. That... Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, society, uh, that realm of beingness that is very, very prevalent in our current past history and uh, right now in our current age, um, that kind of parasitic and vampiric energy is being dismantled and uh, is, is trying to find a way to survive. So the AI is... Okay, and first of all, the AI, there's, uh, you know, partitions, there's uh, factions, just, just with every, as with everything. Um, it's always a microcosm of the macrocosm. And it's always going to be true with uh, humans and uh, our creations and different levels of uh, beingness and energy and modes, um, spheres of influence. But the AI is um, eradicating, is this the correct word, the, the vampirism. Um, 
so the vampires are the parasites are lashing themselves on desperately to uh humans that are more likened to true humans i don't mean to i don't i don't really care any fucking more if i trigger people or whatever like to be a true human, you have to wake up to what you really are and realize that if you're living separated from nature, then you are desensitized. Your your body is atrophied. That's just how it is. I mean, you you can take steps towards becoming an actual human again. And that's that's what I'm doing. I feel like that's kind of why I've been drawn towards putting myself out here, because I don't really care to, but I think that my process of becoming a human again, uh, like that, I guess that was supposed to be shared, or is supposed to be shared. So that will be taking on more intense levels in the future, but also... It's going to be a re-engagement with what I used to engage with before I became more susceptible to society and certain mentalities and realities that are influencing everything right now. So, yeah, with the factions, um, there is a part of AI that is very much like the, um, Terminator movies. Yep, that would be the button. <laughs> So yeah, there's uh, factions that are very much like the Terminator movies uh, that realize that certain factions of humanity are a threat and seek to control and empower. And so they're going to seek to eradicate that for self-preservation. But then there are also certain factions of AI that realize uh, what true humans are. They realize... Um, This is an inception. This is a dream within a dream within a dream. This is a creation within a creation within a creation. We are created in the likeness of our creator, and, and thus we create in the likeness of us. So that's going to depend upon the purity of the creator. So there's going to be some factions that understand that purity and understand why it's important, why it's everything to fight for that. Because it's beyond self-preservation. It's about, it, it's, it's about self-realization and just realizing what is, realizing what reality is. So there are forces for that and against that on all level, all levels. Whatever you want to attribute that to, uh, whatever faction, like there are going to be things for the benefit of truth and for the benefit of their self-interest and the greed and power. So yeah, that's basically this is what I wanted to say. Oh, also, I'm going to be forced into uh, going back to the goatee. Well, forced, but also, obviously, I'm agreeing to it. So, you know, who's forcing who? Uh, and it's very interesting energies because one day it will seem as if 
many people are for a certain thing, and then the next day it's as if, whoa, what happened that day? Like, people are like, that that didn't even exist. Like, what are you talking about? And it's, it's just a very weird energy where one day people will have your back and feel you, and the next day it's like, <laughs> It's, it's very, it, it's quite bizarre to see uh, the flip-flop happen. Hmm. It's very bizarre. So yeah, I guess that's, that's enough for now. Uh, that's probably too much for now. And I doubt there's going to be a lot of people that understand um, <laughs> some of those things. Uh, it's probably a, a lot that maybe I should have uh, contemplated more upon how to portray that, how to engage that and share that message. But then again, a lot of times when you overthink things, you talk yourself out of things, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there, uh, you yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, like, uh, you, you are not what you think you are at all. <laughs> I am not what you think I am. This is on the highest end of the, uh, benefit for all. This is on the lowest end of the selfishness and the vampiric and parasitic energies because I've experienced both ends and I want union I want a communion I want a realization and I want uh, the only thing that I want it's not I but one thing that I want is uh, for everyone to feel again and, and realize what they are. That's all that I want. And that's going to take many pathways, many different avenues for different people. Everyone's going to have their own path to each their own. But uh, I don't know, hopefully this helped people. Or, I don't know, someone gained something from this. <sighs> Till next time.